played Britain's Holiday Diary about 20 years ago when I was a student at Cheatham School of Music. I have to say I haven't played it for a long time, but I remember really enjoying playing this piece, which is one of only very few solo piano pieces that Britton wrote. The piece is split into four movements, and the first one, which I think is possibly the most effective, um, is called Early Morning Bays. It opens with some very intriguing piano gestures, which I think are meant to depict the young boy's hesitance at getting into the water. Then, after not very long of hesitating to get into the water, um, the music completely changes in character and becomes... So it sort of rocks um, in the way that the, uh, the waves of the sea uh, might have rocked the boy. <laughs> second movement changes character completely uh, from the, the sort of exuberance of the first. It's called sailing, so I guess it's oh, the intention of the movement, movement is obvious. Um, what I like most about this second movement is that it has not only really beautiful harmony, but also a melody which seems to, I guess in line with the, the boat which is sailing, it seems to never end. Um, it's constantly soaring above the accompaniment in a really beautiful way. The third movement is most definitely folk-influenced and is called Funfair. I think the title is, is quite funny in a way because I have to say, while this movement is quite fun to play, it's not so much fun to learn. It's um, obviously written by someone who was an incredibly accomplished pianist and has a very fast metronome mark. the funfair it becomes night and Britain writes as the final movement of this suite a movement which I think is incredibly haunting and creates a, a feeling of, of suspension really by its incredibly slow tempo themes from earlier in the suite come back so it's as if the boy on his holiday is reflecting over his uh, reflecting on his day of fun and it brings the suite to a very, a very eerie, almost mysterious close.